Hello. Today we're going to be talking about a case study that illustrates some of the market failures and interventions discussed so far this week. We'll discuss Scott's cybercrime incident response and the role of information sharing and cooperation. The first set of results will investigate concern the response to phishing. Here's a picture of a phishing website impersonating PayPal. How do we know it's phishing? Not by reading the left-hand side of the URL, uh, which reads www.paypal.com, but instead by reading the right-hand side, which reveals the domain to be languagestationindia.com. Many thousands of websites like languagestationindia.com are hacked and used in phishing scams, as well as to distribute malware and peddle counterfeit goods. To counter phishing, banks and other impersonated brands take down the impersonated content hosted on hacked websites. Unlike in, inter in the intermediary liability discussion from the last lecture, they typically do not rely on any legal framework such as the DMCA to remove the content. Instead, they directly contact the relevant party, usually the web hosting company or domain name registrar, and request cleanup. Because, this, because time is so critical here, every minute the website remains online, victims could enter their details, a specialist industry has arisen to help brands expeditiously remove content. Understandably, sharing timely incident data is a necessary step to craft an effective response. Unfortunately, as we will show, defenders have not been adept at cooperating to co combat these attacks, and the criminals have exploited the lack of coordination to great effect. This graph here plots the measured lifetime of phishing websites registered in the .hk and .cn domains over a three-month period. Note that the data presented here is for a specialist form of attack that has not previously registered any domain names in .hk or .cn to that point. What we see is that they first set up shop using Hong Kong domains. The websites initially took weeks to be removed. This is, this is in an industry where takedowns are regularly measured in hours or minutes, not days or weeks. What happens was the authorities in Hong Kong didn't know what hit them, and it took a few weeks to figure it out. Once they did, the websites were shut down relatively quickly, within a few days instead of weeks. However, as soon as the Hong Kong authorities gained some clue, the attackers began registering domains in China instead, and the process repeated itself, with the Chinese authorities being initially slow to respond before they themselves gained a clue. While not shown here, once the Chinese figured out what was going on, the scammers began registering Austrian.at domains. This figure clearly illustrates the consequence of defenders not sharing threat information and how attackers can effectively exploit our own lack of coordination. The lack of information sharing can be illustrated in another way. As mentioned previously, the impersonated brands outsource the cleanup of phishing websites to so-called takedown companies, who specialize in rapidly identifying websites and getting them shut down. Two of the biggest takedown companies share their private lists of websites for phishing with us, along with their list of clients. What we found is that many websites impersonating their clients were uh, only found in the lists of competing takedown companies. Furthermore, because these lists are not shared between the companies, the websites took far longer to be removed. This is illustrated by these two Venn diagrams for the takedown company we refer to as TA. TA knew about, knew about 9,000 phishing websites affecting its clients during the study period, but of these, over 4,000 were found by other companies first, and a further 6,000 uh, could only be found on the list of other companies. The second diagram shows the mean takedown time. Unsurprisingly, for those websites known to TA, they were removed fast, within 17 hours. But for those websites unknown to TA, it took around five days for the websites to be removed. The big mystery is why these websites were removed at all. Nonetheless, these findings show that while leaders may, uh, may respond to the, may espouse the benefits of information sharing, incentive conflicts may preclude it from happening to the benefit of attackers. We can see that the incentives for banks targeting by phishing are further misaligned by looking at the websites that recruit money mules. Here's one example, Waller Truck, which appears to be a fine company specializing in long haul trucking. They've provided over 40 years of quality service, according to their website. <coughs> it turns out they're hiring a regional sales manager who, among other things, must ensure fast remittance of payments through your bank account and then through Worldwide Western Union system and calculate fees at each step. Hmm, seems fishy. But what's the pay like? Well, they offer generous commissions, 10% out of each payment you've dealt with. Now what's going on here? This is a ruse to recruit money mules who will accept incoming payments from fished bank accounts and then forward the payment on via a non-revocable me mechanism like Western Union. The mules then get a 10% cut out of the proceeds, but when the banks realize the scam, they claw the money out of the mules account. The striking thing here is that these mules are 
are a clear choke point for phishing, and yet banks do not actually try to get these websites removed. Instead, it's carried out by motivated volunteers who do an, who do an admirable, albeit much slower job than the banks. Banks choose not to focus on mule recruitment websites, even though they are crucial to the success of phishing scams because their own brand is not being directly impersonated. So what do we conclude from this discussion? The incentive on the party requesting removal matters most. Phishing websites are removed quickly because banks want to remove the content. Slowdowns are caused by a lack of data sharing, spurred by competition among security firms. Other forms of wickedness, such as mule recruitment scams, don't get the same attention as phishing websites do. Scams need a champion who wants to counter them. Otherwise, the scammers will, can operate with impunity. So changing gears slightly, let's now talk about how one might identify intervention points for carrying out uh, these interventions. Due to the Internet's architecture, there are many widely dispersed endpoints whose communications are mediated by key intermediaries. Look for concentrations of badness passing through these points, coupled with an ability to intervene in order to identify a suitable intervention point. <clears throat> in the fight against cybercrime, there are many natural intervention points, such as ISPs fighting botnets and web hosting providers who shut down phishing websites or malware distribution sites. So let's conclude on a positive note by discussing how information sharing can connect uh, and correct information asymmetries uh, and incent better behavior. ISPs have abuse teams that regularly help infected customers clean up their machines, participating in botnets. Now naturally, some do a better job than others, yet without a clear sense of the relative performance, laggards may not recognize the need to improve. In a study carried out from the Netherlands, researchers from TU Delft independently tracked infection rates at all major Dutch ISPs. They then reported their findings in a non-public manner by sharing with each ISP their own performance compared to other ISPs, without calling the others out by name. As it turns out, two ISPs treated, trailed the others by a wide margin. After learning about their position, one ISP dramatically improved performance and became one of the very best performers, while the other improved greatly to the level of other ISPs. This is illustrated nicely in this graph, where the report at the given, given uh, at the time, at the peak in the graph, as you can see, everyone improved following the disclosure, but this was led um, most by the two previously performing ISPs. So information asymmetries can be mitigated uh, in a way that will positively improve security. Thank you for your attention and goodbye.